It's the old two-step. The activist media runs big with a story about a racist act. Then when the story falls apart, the media slinks away without addressing their own role in magnifying the lies. But finally, the public is catching on with Smollett, Covington, Kavanaugh. Now add the Oberlin case to this education in fakery. A jury nailed Oberlin College and a dean named Meredith Raimondo with an $11 million penalty for siding with three black students who claimed they were racially profiled at a bakery in 2016. The case got a lot of press. There were massive protests that targeted the bakery, but not just by students either. The dean actually distributed a flyer yep. claiming the bakery had a history of racism and encouraged a boycott. The bakery went through hell for obvious reasons. But finally, truth won out. The students pleaded guilty to attempted theft, admitting they weren't profiled at all. Here's a photo of the family who owns the bakery. Mm -hmm. You can see the racial hate in their eyes. So once again, what the media first promoted turned out false. And we should be glad that, again, the demand for racist stories exceeds the supply. America's better than the media thinks, which is why to most people, the media means nothing. But I doubt such hoaxes will stop until the media and academia admit their roles, which won't be soon. Oberlin just blasted the verdict. But other schools must be quaking as Oberlin learns a hard truth. Don't believe in the vigilante media without evidence just because the accusation fits your ideology. Mm -hmm. That education costs them millions. Yep. Unlike their overpriced diplomas, it's worth every penny. <laughs> So, Katie, there's, I guess there's going to be, it could be 11 million is the minimum. Yeah. I guess there's going to be more punitive damages. It could go up three times that or something. I think it's interesting to see how they actually won this lawsuit. Libel cases are very difficult to win in court, but this goes to the, uh, the bigger picture about grievance culture. So, when grievance culture is rewarded, then false victimhood becomes an excuse for bad behavior and accountability. And when the media blasted out like it's true without asking questions, interviewing the bakery, telling both sides of the story. They amplify the grievance culture that's being ex used as an excuse for bad behavior. And then they get rid of it when it's no longer convenient or turns out not to fit their narrative, right? And so it continues. That's why we, re we repeatedly see these screw-ups by the media and repeatedly see this kind of behavior on college campuses or uh, in general everyday life. And so until that stops, until you can't use grievance culture as an excuse for that kind of behavior, then it's going to continue. Yeah. You know, Juan, there's always this kind of like thing where there's a phenomenon and then the phenomenon goes unchecked until it's checked. And maybe this just is something in our, in, in, in our society that is putting the brakes on something that might need breaks, meaning like these accusations, whether it is, whether it is has to do with race or sexual assault, what, with the, um, what are those guys, Duke Lacrosse, things like that. If that, can, if that can have an effect on such accusations, I don't know. Well, I think there's a lot of truth in what you're saying because it seems to me first reports are often wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think especially in this age we live in, which is a 24-7 news cycle, the news media is hungry to get first right. track on the story. And, of course, they take the easy track every time. I mean, my caution to you, Greg, would be, does this apply to conservatives? Mm -hmm. Because as I recall, things like, you know, Central Park Five. Remember, Trump ran a whole ad, of, a full-page ad in the New York Times. Or how about that MAGA attack down in Florida, that guy in the truck, and, and the conservatives said, oh, this is a false flag. This can't be true. I Not true. I think the conservatives said that. Yeah, they did. A false flag. In fact, I, I was amazed at how quickly people are just, like, taking knee-jerk response, Katie. I think this not is Not in the not media. Not, uh, there weren't conservative commentators <laughs> well, defending that guy. No, no, no. They were saying, we don't know. And I think that's what you should say. We don't know. They were I'm saying the false flag. What? I'm the king of saying we don't know. Well, I'm all for I think that. I patent that. But I don't think it's left or right. I think it's all over in our uh, age. The people it, leaped. I mean, yesterday, the helicopter crashes. Immediate people, oh, what? My God. They don't know what happened. But uh, uh, immediately, oh, terrorism? They don't know. Yeah, that's I not say us. I, I say I don't know because sometimes I literally just don't know. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> sometimes. Uh, sometimes. Right, sometimes. Um, but I think what happens is now you have a fake allegation that can be more powerful mm -hmm. than the truth. And the media will sensationalize the charge, and then when there's a resolution, they just ignore it. Right. And many liberals in this country, I think Juan would even agree, believe that America is racist and that white people discriminate against black people. So whenever a race card is played, yep. the media and the left will automatically assume the worst out of the situation, and then the press will propel that narrative. But nothing is worse than a fake charge of racism. It can have such extreme reputational damage to somebody that now you're changing your behavior because you're afraid of everything. 
Police departments, they're now pulling back from certain neighborhoods. The New York Times ran an op-ed the other day. Was I right to call the cops on a black man breaking into a car? It's, it's gotten crazy. Now, same thing with the Me Too movement. They just came out with a poll. 60% of male managers are too nervous to mentor women, to go to workplace activities with women, to be alone in their office with a woman. So that's the problem. It's mob rule. You've destroyed you know, due process. Mm -hmm. And the problem is the media divides for profit instead of looking at the truth. Dana, thoughts? Um, I would say that this case and the way it's ended up proves that you can fight back and win, and now there's case law. Right. And it, that's something that didn't happen before, so now you actually have a, a, like a floor. Mm -hmm. So it's not just he said, she said. This is a family-run business. They, are t they were very tied into the community. Um, and th the fact that the university immediately was like, okay, well, we have to do this because it would be the politically correct thing to do. Now they're going to have to pay this $11.2 million, possibly more. So you know what that means. Mm -hmm. Time to increase tuition. Ah. Because they won't have to pay for it, right? right? Mom and dad will pay for it. I don't know that it was free, that it was politically correct. I think they made the no, argument that it was free speech right. for them to say what they, the kids who wrongly made those charges.